Have you ever seen an electronic component that looks like this? I've seen parts similar to this, but nothing quite like these, so I was very excited to get them. Based on the fact that they have three terminals, I was pretty confident that these are transistors, but I didn't know what kind. To determine what this package was, I had to dig through all of the transistor outline specifications listed on the JDEC website. Eventually I made it to the TO-121, which is a perfect match. According to the document on JDEC's website, this transistor outline dates all the way back to 1967. The specification lists a four terminal device, but says that three terminal devices are allowed, which is what we have here. Let's open it up so we can get a closer look at what's inside. Typically these types of parts are welded together, so I'll use something like my jeweler saw to separate the top lid. I'll cut into the part about the width of the saw blade all around the circumference, making sure not to cut as deep on one side. After I'm done cutting around the circumference, I'll use something to pry open the lid. I take this approach to open up these types of parts so that I don't risk the lid scratching or breaking what's inside. Before we take a closer look, I'll dust it off with some compressed air to remove any debris that may have gotten inside. At this point, I'm pretty confident that this is in fact a transistor, but I'll confirm it later in the video. First, let's take a look at it under the microscope. Just like how the package is exotic, I've never seen a transistor quite like this before. This device is constructed with some of the thickest wire bonds I've ever seen on a transistor. It also appears that there may be two pieces of silicon stacked on top of each other. I've never seen anything quite like this before. Other than that, there's not a whole lot of stuff to look at on this part. That being said, I can still zoom in so we can get a closer look at the surface of it. As we zoom in, we get a clearer view of the different regions in the silicon. And if we zoom all the way in, we can see an interesting texture on the top metal layer that the wires bond to. Speaking of bond wires, let's get a closer look at these. They're certainly massive, and it looks like something pressed down on them in order to fuse them to that top metal layer. If I look at it from the side, you can sort of get a better view of how it's attached to the silicon. So you may be wondering, how do we confirm what this device is? One way to test it is with one of these multifunction device testers. All you have to do is plug in your device into any of the numbered terminals and push the start button. This tester came with some probe clip leads, so I'll start with those. I have each terminal for the device connected arbitrarily to the function tester, and let's see what we got. And the answer is an NPN BJT. It's a little hard to see what pin is what, so I'll draw it out. According to the tester, these are the base, collector, and emitter pins. That means the two center sections are the emitter, which is encircled by the base. That leaves the entire collector to be the bottom of the silicon. Just to make sure that the probe clips weren't interfering, I ran one more test with the device plugged directly into the tester. I was able to bend the legs in such a way that it fit right in. After running the test again, I'm able to confirm that the values are essentially the same as the first run. I was curious if some of the other transistors in this lot would measure the same. So I folded up a second transistor, put it in the tester, and here are the results. It's still an NPN BJT and has similar values to the first one, but it's missing two values that were on the previous runs. It's possible these are different devices or that I damaged it opening it up. Anyways, I think it's a pretty cool part that I didn't know existed. Well, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please consider liking the video and subscribing so you don't miss future content. You can help support future content by subscribing on Instagram or by purchasing items from my website. The items I have for sale on my website currently consist of PCB coins that I've designed, silicon wafers, and a few t-shirts. If you want to keep in touch in between videos, you can also join the ChipChat Discord server. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next chip.